finally, we are now into the barren wasteland season of movie releases. Pretty much nothing good is going to come out between now and May because all the good films are already nominated for Oscars, or are going to be, and everything else is being held back for blockbuster season. Coming to theaters this week, we've got The Dilemma with Vince Vaughn, Green Hornet with Seth Rogen, and Barney's version with my boyfriend, Paul Giamatti. Who are we? B and V engine design. The Dilemma asks the question, what would you do if you found out that your best friend's spouse was cheating on them? Interesting question, which was sort of struck upon by producing team Ron Howard and Brian Grazer when they were in Rome shooting Angels and Demons. They decided to turn it into a movie starring Vince Vaughn and Kevin James, who are both married to women who are way too hot for them, Winona Ryder and Jennifer Connelly. <sighs> Ron Howard, we need to have a very serious talk. Parenthood is one of the best comedies of my childhood. But the dilemma, the fact that they're even calling it a comedy is offensive. I can sit here and call myself the princess of England. That doesn't mean that I'm gonna become one. The comedy is so not there in this movie. There's nothing funny, there's nothing interesting. And Vince Vaughn, I wanna punch him in his face. Vince Vaughn never ever goes outside the box. Every single movie he's doing the same thing, but he's great at it. Typical Vince Vaughn film. A little more substance though. The I'm on cocaine dialogue heaviness that he loves to run with, ramping and ranting. The second cousin, just so you know, is not really even a relative because someone could have sex with their second cousin and the kid would most likely still be normal. That dude needs to figure it out because Swingers was 15 years ago. You gotta do something else now, buddy. It's time. And Kevin James, when Kevin James is the most likable part of a situation, whoa. We're in treacherous territory. Actually, he and Kevin James make a great duo, and I, I am a huge fan of Wedding Crashers, and I pity any actor who attempts to trump the Owen Wilson, Vince Vaughn pair. He comes in a close second. They're hilarious together. The women in this film, blue. Um, Winona Ryder, who put you in this movie? And I didn't really buy Jennifer Connelly and Vince Vaughn's relationship either. I mean, this dude is coming home with like leper, like rashes all over his face and bruises, his Mustang has been obliterated. And yet he whips out a ring to propose and she's ready to sign up. This doesn't seem realistic to me. P.S. Queen Latifah says the words, Lady Wood. I just threw up in my mouth. Brian Grazer and Ron Howard are rich enough. So is Vince Vaughn. You don't need to see the dilemma. Don't support it. It's like giving an alcoholic a bottle of whiskey. It's a bad situation. I'm gonna tell your husband I was married to Helen Keller. Helen Keller? Yeah, what? the girl with all the personality. Sybil. Barney Ponowski. 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 Ofski. Ponowski. It's fine. Mazel tov. Barney's version is a small independent film that came out of Canada, and the real reason to see this movie is two words, Paul Giamatti. He's nominated for a Golden Globe. He's my pick to win in the Best Actor, Musical, or Comedy. He is just a tremendous actor. If you've seen John Adams, you know that you can watch that man do anything. And in this film, he plays a really dark, twisted, angry, alcoholic. The movie and the book both ask the question, what's more painful, remembering or forgetting? And that's a great question to ask yourself. The question is, is does this film ask it in a way that's compelling enough? And the answer to that question is no. The acting is tremendous. Rosamund Pike, who has had a banner year with Maiden Dogenham, this, she's a brilliant woman to watch. Mini Driver, who I've loved since Circle of Friends, does another really great turn as one of Barney's early wives. Scott Speedman, hello Ben Covington from Felicity. But this film is really difficult to get through. It's not really a drama, it's not really a comedy. It falls into a category that I'd like to call dark comedy, which is a genre that's having a resurgence with film like True Grit. But it's not that funny, and it's not that emotionally demanding on the audience. Unfortunately, it's a masterclass that can be rented. You can go ahead and skip Barney's version. Wanna see something cool? Whoa! You did that? What did you think of my father? He was a complex man. Let's talk about Columbia Pictures' The Green Hornet, starring Seth Rogen, Jay Chow, Christoph Waltz, and Cameron Diaz. The story is about Britt Reed, billionaire, heir to a media empire, 
who decides to team up with his father's chauffeur, mechanic, barista, Cameron Diaz. How long are we gonna continue to let her play an ingenue? I mean, she's 37 years old. When she introduces herself as a temp, it really doesn't come off as the slightest bit believable. This film is meant to be an action comedy, but it doesn't ever really seem to decide on which one it wants to be. Therefore, neither of them really live up to the potential that they could. Michel Gondry's sense of speed and color do make a few scenes in the movie exceptional, but it's literally only three or four parts of the film. However, Seth Rogen blows it with his arrogance. It just doesn't suit him. He ought to be more charming than sleazy, and it comes off wrong in this film. Christoph Waltz also wasted in this film. We're talking about the actor who won the Best Supporting Oscar for playing the most menacing character in movies of the last year. This character, his main feature is that he's insecure about whether or not people find him menacing. And it just makes him kind of boring. All of the jokes kind of fall flat and there's an awful lot of ADR, the thing where you can't see their mouths and someone cracks wise. And it just seems like a joke they added at the last second because what they originally had wasn't good enough. The action looks really good but loses its momentum. It starts off with these big tiled effects that you've seen in the trailer, but then becomes just another standard car chase movie. So what you end up with feels more like a standard Hollywood superhero flick. Nothing impressive, but not terrible. I would say it's worth seeing. Skip the 3D, save a couple of dollars, and uh, enjoy this flick. likes the dilemma. I love Vince Vaughn. Whatever he does, I follow. I'm a committed, avid supporter of Vince Vaughn. He was funny. He was not funny. Nothing about that movie was funny. Ron Howard should hide his head in shame. I'll give you that. I mean, I, I actually went into it, please everybody forgive me that's listening, and did not realize that Ron Howard had directed it. And when I saw his name, I was kind of like, what? It just feels like one of those movies that everybody involved was just doing for a paycheck. Well, which can't be the case with all of these people with all these successful movies behind them. They don't need the money. Why did they choose to do such a dumb movie? Why did Brian Grazer and Ron Howard develop the movie? Why does Winona Ryder only blink with one eye? And Jennifer Connelly just like do something amusing. Why was she like, there? And eat a cheesesteak. She's got to eat something. She was way hotter when she had a case of the thickness yeah. back during the Rocketeer. Yeah. Everyone. Brendan? Yeah, mega boner. Uh, let's talk about the Green Hornet. Um, I, I think this movie has a bunch of great parts to it that just don't connect to make a good whole. I, I think all of these people are good on their own and could be good together, but someone wouldn't let them. No, you cannot say that Jay Chow doesn't crush this movie. He rocks that world, owns that movie, makes it his bitch, and then spanks it and sends it on his is This is true. <laughs> Do you think the reason you didn't like the movie as much as I did is because you went in with high expectations and I went in with low? That's entirely possible. That's uh, one, one thing I will say about that is, uh, it disappoints me personally that no matter how much weight Seth Rogen loses, he still looks like a schlub. That gives me no hope. Oh. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> Barney's version is another film that disappointed me quite a bit also because the acting is exceptional. It really is. Like, if you want to know how to be a great actor, you should just rent everything Paul Giamatti has ever done and then stare at Rosamund Pike and go, wow, she's so beautiful. And Minnie Driver is fantastic in this movie. But the script is a mess. And it's based on a book that was written by a man who had Alzheimer's that was then amended and footnoted by people who knew the real versions of the stories that he was telling. So even as source material, it was a complete fractured mess. I don't know how they could have possibly thought that they could make it into a film. So it's halfway to a Charlie Kaufman movie. <laughs> Absolutely.